The bloat! The bloat! Ah. 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 <laughs> what a terrible nightmare! Oh. <laughs> Let's do this! Oh, hey girl. <laughs> what are you doing down there? Uh, 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 nothing. Oh, just kind of looks like you're, uh, I don't know, hiding or something. Me? Hiding? Canoe? What? You know, girl, it, it's really weird. I don't know, something about today. Just, I don't know, it's just a weird feeling out there. Oh, yeah, well, mm. it, it's better to stay inside, I reckon. Yeah, you know, keep all the doors locked and fill the bath water. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> Uh, what are you talking about, girl? What? Nothing. Uh, uh, how about moving? Yeah. Uh, where's that monster got to? Ah. Oh, hey. Oh, is that for me? Oh, great. Well, it looks like part two of our zombie trilogy is going to be zombie flesh eaters. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. I, I, I almost forgot about the horror trope list. There it is. So, if Galveston gets all of those tropes in this one movie, then the film goes in the pit. If he doesn't, I win, and the film stays in my collection forever. Well, at least until you're impending death anyway, huh? At least until the foreseeable future anyway. Great, well, I better go put it on the windows. <laughs> Back in a minute. And without further ado, it's time to watch Lucio Fulci's Zombie Flesh Eaters. Roll VT! I don't know. It's just something people say, isn't it? For my nap. Oy, oh, that's unnecessary. I'm sorry, I'm just all caught in a shadow. Oh, I didn't even see your face. <laughs> Hold on, I thought this film was called Zombie Flesh Eaters. Why does it say zombie in the title? Well, this is an Italian knock. I mean, this is an Italian original movie. Galveston, so it was obviously renamed. So it was renamed to fall in line with the Italian release of the American George Romero movie, Dawn of the Dead, which was called Zombie. So they called this one Zombie, but then it's also called Zombie 2. And then in Europe, it's called Zombie Flesh Eaters. Oh, it's as simple as that, is it? <laughs> God, I love Italian movies. Oh, maybe I should have... Uh... Oh, did I border up the back door? Captain, what are you talking about? Oh, it doesn't matter. Hey, contamination called. It wants its opening sequence back, please. I'm sure you made that joke already. So, uh, Gal, not, uh, you know, <laughs> not saying anything, but this is kind of a, you know, creepy opening. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, okay, I guess, I guess so, sure. Why not? Oh man, are there already donuts going, Heimdy? Ha ha ha! Surprise! Give us a hug, give us a cuddle, you! Give us a kiss! 
Oh, <laughs> kids or cuddles. One of the two. The pants are just falling off you, sweetheart. Oh my god, somebody spilled red wax right on that guy's neck! For saying the zombies of the uh, larger persuasion, it gets around pretty quick. Don't shoot me. You, you don't make me angry. You, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. You take one step closer, pal. I'm gonna fill you full of lead. <laughs> Time for a swim. <laughs> These holes are making me sink. Foreboding much? So now this boat's been condemned by the police and moored in the harbour, a young girl is going to investigate. What's she up to? Well, spoilers, it was her dad's boat. <laughs> I just love, I love the comical outline of the dead body. That's hilarious. Did they ever really do that? Thought it was just something that was in Warner cartoons. So she's the daughter of a scientist that hasn't returned from the island of Matul. Yeah, we're going to get into the naming of the island later. Here comes Ian McCulloch. Yes, that's right, being Peter West, the reporter, who's out for the latest scoop. God, I live Ian McKellen. I'm sorry if I frightened you, but if I hadn't done that, you'd have screamed for sure. And our friend down there would have been on the... Whether playing an alcoholic astronaut or a crazy reporter with a name like Peter West, he is always class. I've been following you all afternoon. How clever. Professional curiosity. Well, the police version doesn't convince me. And I guess it doesn't convince you either, otherwise you wouldn't be here. What, uh, what were you looking for? You got it. You know, it's kind of a shame, Galveston, but in the trope list, you don't have that let's pretend to be kissing so we can hide away from the police or, uh, you know, somebody that's after us trope in movies. <laughs> Never mind. God, I hate you so much sometimes. No, don't give me the same old story. So, her father never returned from that mysterious island, and she's with a reporter who's got the cash to pay for the travel to get the latest scoop. <laughs> what could go wrong? Uh, senor... Do you know anyone who can rent us a boat? I don't know, it's just something about your blue suit just reminds me of Mr. Rogers. We want to go to Matul. It's very important. Yes, that's right. The island that these people are trying to reach is called Matul. <laughs> I could make a million jokes about that, but I'm not going to. Because it's beneath me. Oh, more like you haven't got the brains to come up with a joke, you mean? <laughs> you. Uh... No, I'm not looking at you because I'm interested in you in any way like that. No, I'm, I'm just looking at you and admiring your messy hair. Is it as messy as my messy hair? Yes, but I have the better 70s slash 80s porn style beard. So there. You've got to look this age-old cliche of, of a, a boatsman or a local warning of the dangerous island. Don't go to the island, they say, and they never listen because they always go to the island. I've got to get there, they say, and by golly, they're going to get there, no matter what. It reminds me of the scene from the 1931 Dracula movie where Renfield's talking to the locals of Transylvania and they're trying to convince him not to go to the castle. And he goes to the castle. Yeah, we're going to do that film one day. I think I met Dracula once. Oh, did you, Galveston? Yeah, it was a snappy dresser. Never ate much, but he liked to drink. Oh, talking about bad jokes. What? What do you mean? Not a joke. Now he was funny, unlike you, because you're not funny. Uh, moving on. Okay, Peter. We'll have to load more supplies. You pay your share. Deal? So, after not very much convincing, the boatman and his wife, maybe girlfriend, I can't believe they're living in sin, um, agreed to take Mr. West and the lady to the island of Matul. Where something awaits. I want to leave this damn island right now. Well, you can't right now. Meanwhile, at the Tuesday Scientist's house. Man. Apart from, from a handful of superstitious natives, I'm the only one who knows what you're doing. And don't think I'm going to keep my mouth shut. 
See, who'd have thought being married to an alcoholic, crazy, mad scientist would bring, you know, marital problems? They're just not getting on. I'm not spying on your girlfriend. <laughs> Our hero, everyone. <clears throat> Damn, this is good molasses. Man, this film 70s slash early 80s. Well, to be fair, whenever I swim, I always swim topless. It's just the way I roll. And here comes one of the most famous slash infamous scenes of the movie. Yes, it's shark versus zombie. Ugh. And as exciting as that sounds, it really isn't. Apparently the filmmakers had to tranquilize a local shark. Um, they make it sound very casual in the kind of like descriptions of the movie, but I don't know how you tranquilize a shark. Surely it can't be that easy. Ah, oh, you know, just give it a couple of drinks. I don't think sharks drink, Alveston. Ah, oh, whatever. Apparently they arranged a specialist stunt guy to do this on the day, but uh, he had backed out, surprisingly enough. We on Jack Horror Hound's House of Horrors do not condone any animal cruelty to be making a film. Well, if you can say anything about it, you can at least say it's a little bit better than Cannibal Holocaust. Oh yeah, I don't even want to get into it. It should be a cool sequence, but because it's shot underwater and uh, the shark is anything but energised here, uh, probably due to the tranquilizers, um, the scene doesn't kind of come off as great as its first sounds. The man what? <laughs> Talk about the shark getting the upper hand. Uh. Meanwhile, at the hospital of the damned. Hygiene's really gone down here, hasn't it? I'm only giving this a three and a half star Yelp review. He's over here, Doctor. Another zombie. Nurse, why are you bothering me with these things? It's just another human being transforming into the living dead. Come to me when you have some real news, damn it. So in many ways, this film reminds me of The Exorcist. It's where, you know, real world science meets voodoo mysticism. Except, nowhere near as good. You're not talking about the shark exorcist film, are you? No, I'm not talking about that movie, Galveston. <laughs> Definitely not. I don't want the others to see him. There's no need to alarm them. Tie him down securely. Doctor! Because nothing alarms patients like seeing another patient tied down as he's slowly decaying and dying and turning into a zombie voodoo thing. <gasps> yeah, no, I'd, I'd feel great about that. Meanwhile, gratuitous nudity shot. Again. Because this film just can't help itself. Not the first woman to struggle with a handful of wood. It's got to be said that the actress that plays the doctor's wife has beautiful eyes. Ah, uh, it's mud in your eye. Ah, ay, ah. Oh, I've got glasses on. <laughs> That's lucky. Meanwhile, in the abandoned street corridor. Good thing he's coming through. I'm a crab. I met your father about three years ago. When he first came, and he could help in discovering what was causing the horrors that were destroying our island, transforming it into a wasteland of terror. So our heroes have finally met up with the Mad Doctor, and he's going to take them right to the centre of this little problem. Oh, I can already smell the whiskey and cigarettes on this guy's breath. God, I remember when I was happy. There were no zombies and my wife wasn't dead, impaled in the face by a spike in the door. God, I miss those days. And the whiskey. Yeah, well, I, the thing is, we trust you, right? But you just don't seem to have the 70s messy hair. Or, you know, the, the porn star beard like my friend here. Ah, uh, your voices are getting really bad now, you know. <laughs> what? What are you doing? If I'm honest, that's my best Michael Caine impression. Really? Yeah. I don't know, I'm just getting these really weird vibes from this guy. Almost like he's some sort of crazy mad scientist bringing about the zombie apocalypse. Do, do you know what I mean by that? Huh. 
I mean, it's not even funny yeah, so at this the point. The thing is, right, you do me this favour and don't blow the bloody doors off. You get my wife, you bring her here too sweet, and you I know, mean no sharp. Like a strange feeling that patient's gonna turn into a zombie. Keep an eye on him. Plenty of fluids. Oh, I'm not well. Oh, the bats on my arms killing me. Some chronic nerve. Oh, did I forget to feed my can? Oh, oh, doctor. You know, it's weird, doctor, because I'm like a kind of native islander. And, you know, doctor, it's weird because I'm kind of a gruff uh, island native. And then I've got like amazing white teeth, haven't I? It's almost a shame I'm going to become a living dead member. It's almost a shame I'm going to become a member of the living dead, isn't it? Oh, make sure you get my right side of my face. You know, my good side. You mean the side that looks like it's been in the microwave for too long? Meanwhile, on the set of the Pigmen Take Manhattan. Worst safari ever. There's not even any zebras. <laughs> I wanted to see the raccoons! <laughs> Chance and sail to the nearest place where we know there's a shipyard. After we've seen the doctor's wife. Look, Peter, is that it? Yes, welcome to the island Hawaii Beach Resort where we have huts, a graveled side path, and yellow flowers. What, no valet? We seriously got no valet right here? Knock, knock, who's there? Oh, Mrs. Zombie Death Scientist, are you home? Geez, I really hope the three bears don't live here. It's at this point that our protagonists engage in a very, like, casual amount of breaking and entering. <laughs> oh my god, who does her nails? And we find that one of the zombies is still halfway through his meal. I just hope he doesn't try and talk with his mouth full, that's all. Oh, family watch. <laughs> it's always in the last place you look, isn't it? She's still got one good eye, though. That's a plus. Having said that, they are pretty sedate zombies, even when they're eating. Well, I always get like that when I've got a stomach full, especially in the heat. Good point, Galveston. They're coming out of the walls! They're coming out of the goddamn walls! Ian McCulloch's on the case. He does not mess around at all, grabbing whatever blunt instrument's at hand, even if it is pinned to a wall. Get us out of here, please! Get us out. They actually leave the house and drive away. Smart. When we get back to New York... Uh, you don't have to say anything now. I can't foresee anything happening to these two lovers as they lie in the grass with the zombies coming down on top of them. That's the perfect time for a love scene. I find nothing more erotic than being threatened by the living dead. Especially when I've just seen horrific scenes of murder. I know we're sweaty, stinky, We've been running through the jungle. We've been chased by hordes of living dead. But I have to kiss you right now. Oh, yes, please kiss me. Right now. In this shrubbery and bushes and dirty mud and filthy decaying leaves. Kiss me, man meat. And as if the zombies can smell the sex in the air, the poster child for this movie, well, the zombie on the poster, po the poster zombie, pops up for a quick hello. This is one of the better makeups in the whole film. And yeah, okay, it takes about 18,000 million years for it to stand up. And the actress just stands there as if she wants to die. It's almost like the zombie doesn't want to put its head fully forward so the maggots don't fall out of its head. Oh, this was on the main by close up. Oh my god. Man, I'm really hungry. I feel like I need to eat some chicken. Chicken, Galveston? Can you be here after midnight? But not to worry, the bearded boyfriend is here with his shotgun and he knows exactly where to put those holes. Yeah, right in the back of the zombie's back. Everybody knows name for the head, guy. Aim for the head. For God's sake! Oh, my God. 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 O
Well, finally, the Doctor gets his. As our heroes create Molokov cocktails to throw at the ensuing zombie horde, which is a really smart idea when you're trapped in a building, to then throw flaming Molokov cocktails at zombies that are then going to walk through the building and set the rest of the building on fire, which is exactly what happens. Smart. Oh, it's like I always say, there's nothing like a beautiful reunion between lovers. Oh, our love life's getting very bitey. And as the laboratory burns to the building, just like any good classic horror movie, our heroes make it to the abandoned boat and get off of the island, Dr. Moreau style. So it's just the two survivors and the bearded boyfriend that was bitten by a zombie. Hold on, that's not going to end well, is it? Oh, what could possibly go wrong? Well, as our intrepid heroes head back to Manhattan, they turn on the radio. In every borough of the city, from Brooklyn to Manhattan, from Harlem to Queens, the zombies are taking over. And here's some very disquieting news. Yeah, the big fat zombie from earlier? <laughs> he didn't remain idle at all. Oh, the flush doesn't work and I've really gone to town in here. Oh, this is my kind of film, yeah. The end of the world. <laughs> You'll see that soon, human. What? Uh, nothing. And then we cut back to Manhattan and we see that the, the whole city is overrun with the living dead. It's the end of the world. Or maybe it's just the top of that bridge. I mean, the traffic underneath seems perfectly fine. And I can't see any flaming buildings or anything. So maybe the zombies just attack bridges. One can hope. And that, ladies and gentlemen is Lucia Fulci's Zombie Flesh Eaters, a.k.a. Zombie, a.k.a. Zombie 2. Well, there you have it. That was Lucia Fulci's Zombie Flesh Eaters. <laughs> what did you think, Galvis Galveston? Hey, where did he go? Okay, I'm coming.